Okay, that was not as dramatic as I thought it'd be. What's up, Much Music? GK here, and today we're back with another album ranking, this time with Billie Eilish's new album, Hit Me Hard and Soft, after the first listen. Now, I know it's been about a week since the album came out. This is my first time going top to bottom. Let's just get into it. So after first listen, overall thoughts, this is definitely something new and different that we've heard from Billie Eilish. So it is a pretty short album overall. It's 10 songs. I only put 11 here because the hit me hard and soft, like five second visualizer thing was on there. So obviously starting off, I'm gonna put that last because it's not an actual song, but I just had to include it in there. So here we are, hit me hard and soft. <laughs> 11, title track of the album. Love it. So we're gonna go from bottom to top. Next up at number 10, we have Wildflower. She was a girl. So it's a beautiful song. I think just personally, my taste in music, I'm not super into the slow, sad girl anthems, although they are very pretty and nice. I do appreciate them and I respect them, but it's just not my style. Um, I'm even reading the lyrics here. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty sad. Valentine's Day crying in the hotel. I know you didn't mean to hurt me, so I kept it to myself. Obviously she's getting really raw and real with her emotions in this album, which is awesome. I feel like the Billy fans love that, but for me, Wildflower is gonna have to be at a 10. For number nine, I've chosen the greatest. All the times I wait, Lighters in the sky. Like, gorgeous. Her voice is beautiful. She can go really high, really softly, and it's it's really gorgeous. But again, it kind of falls under the same kind of slow, sad girl music and. For me, it's kind of similar vibes to Wildflower. That's why those two kind of, they're in similar ranking. Next up, we're gonna go with The Diner. This one was a little bit different. Put this one at number eight. It's giving Pink Panther for some reason, <laughs> the sax. So this one's a little bit different. It's got a little bit of a kind of eerie vibe to it. I've read theories online that this is actually about a stalker of hers or something like that. So if that's true, um, it's it's kind of given crime story. I don't know, just the overall vibe. Do you know what I'm saying? And just the little like mischievous kind of like jazzy sound in the back. I don't know. It's, it's painting that sort of vibe for me. Um, but again, it's got a little bit of an upbeat kind of kick to it, which I like but not my favorite of the album. We're kind of getting into the higher ones now. So moving on, number seven, L'Amour de ma vie, which translates from French to English to love of my life. This one's actually really interesting. There's a there's an interesting vibe switch up in the middle of the song. Uh, it's one of the longer tracks on the album. So let me play a snippet. I wish you the best for the rest of your life. Right there, that sounded extremely jazzy to me. I don't know what it is, but it sounds like an artist by the name of Leve. I really like her voice and it's giving that same kind of energy to it. Like so cute. The love of my life. But let me go to the vibe, to the genre switch up. It's like at about three minutes and 48 seconds. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Cynthia. 80s, this is my jam, dance, right here. Oh. For me, I really think the little genre change there uh, towards the end is what I really like. See, that's kind of more my style of music. What that changed to, I love. So we're keeping that at seven. All right, at number six, next up we've got, what did I what did I put as my number six here? We got Chihiro. This has been one of the more popular songs off of the album. This is the one where she's like, open up the door. Open up the door, can you open up the door? So the, the title of the song Chihiro is actually uh, about a character, an animated character. Her name is Chihiro from a movie called Spirited Away, I believe. I don't know too much about the actual character or the movie, so I don't wanna get too much into the interpretation, but there's a lot out there online. 
um, just, you know, about what people think that the song is actually about and why it's referencing that character. But in terms of the actual song, I think it's very chill, very lo-fi. I can picture myself walking into a Zara and listening to that song. If you haven't already, like, let me know. Did you hear that in a Zara yet? All right, moving on number five, we've got the first song on the album that starts it off is Skinny. I think this one's very deep and emotional. I think it sort of addresses comments made on her appearance, on her body. Like the lyrics literally say, people say I look happy just because I got skinny, but the old me is still me and maybe the real me. And I think she's pretty. So I do really love the meaning here. I'm gonna play a snippet. Just because I got skinny, but the old me is still I like this. I like the message of this one. I feel like a lot of fans would appreciate this one coming from her as well. She's getting vulnerable. She's getting raw in her music. And this one's on the higher end of the spectrum for me. Again, still that slow kind of vibe, which to me sonically and like musically isn't my vibe, but I, I love the lyrics. Okay, getting into my above five. This is above the halfway mark. We're gonna go with Bittersweet. The first thought that popped into my head when I listened to this song for the first time was that this could be a great opening to her tour. Like this could be the perfect song that she opens with at her show, so. Like, you know what I mean? It's like soul grabbing. Then it kind of gets quiet. And as it gets quiet, it brings up that build up once again, kind of bringing it to that sort of vibe again. But yeah, I love that. I don't know, right off the bat, that's just giving like a very cinematic, really intriguing opening. And I like that it slowly kind of, you know, goes quiet and builds up to that again. I really enjoyed that kind of structure. All right, guys, the time that we've been all waiting for, the much anticipated top three. Let's go, number three, drum roll, please. Blue, blue is gonna be my third pick over here. <laughs> I could listen to that part like literally a million times. Like I can't. I love it. It's kind of melancholy, but it's kind of got that like soft rock alternative feel in the background. I, this is, this one surprised me honestly. So I know it's kind of one of the less popular ones. I didn't even, it's not even one of the most popular ones. It's the, it's the last track on the album. And to me, it's one of the best. Moving on, obviously guys, we can't reveal two without revealing one and we can't reveal the top spot without revealing two, vice versa. So we're gonna start off by just revealing the top spot and then talking about number two as well. So drum roll, please, top spot of Hit Me Hard and Soft, Billie Eilish's third studio album is Lunch. I don't care, maybe I'm basic. This song slaps. We did a little reaction on her music video if you wanna go check that out. But immediately I just loved the upbeat tempo of this song. I think it's kind of scandalous too. Why does this kind of give me like Cage the Elephant, social cues, energy. That 90s flair to it as well, especially in the music video. And I just love it. I think it's a bop. I think it's fun. Number two for me is Birds of a Feather. This is giving driving down the country road in the sunset. Windows down, dandelions, sunflowers. I love it. It's a very romantic kind of exactly, exactly what the title's describing it. Birds of a feather. It's got that light romantic feel to it. It reminds me of a song that should be the montage to a romantic movie, like just a soundtrack of someone's relationship, if that makes sense. <laughs> but as you guys can see here, kind of the common theme for me of like what goes top to bottom is kind of the top are the more happy-go-lucky, kind of light, airy, carefree kind of vibe, if that makes sense. Even, even if the lyrics don't depict that, I like the sound that kind of emulates that and expresses that emotion. So this is my final ranking, everyone. Hit me hard and soft. After the first listen, you know, thoughts could change, especially after even after the second listen. But if I listen to this a few more times, I'm guaranteed that my, my thoughts would shift. But I would love to know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Let me know how many times you've listened to the album, what your ranking would be, what you would change, what you would not change. Be sure to let us know what you'd like us to rank and react to next down in the comments below too. Much love.